Today's lesson is on interpreting graphs of linear functions. Last day we learned that a linear function was one that gave us a straight line on a graph, or also one where the change in the independent variable was constant, and it also gave a constant change in the dependent variable. So our learning intentions are first to be able to determine what rate of change means. So yesterday when we saw a rate of change of 10 meters per second, what did that really mean? Second is to be able to calculate horizontal and vertical intercepts. Intercepts are where when you have a graph, it's when a line crosses one of those graph axes. And you're going to be able to do this graphically on a graph and also algebraically. So when you have a function, can you calculate it? And last, to use a linear graph to solve a problem. So if I gave you a linear graph, I could ask you a question about it and you could find an answer. First we're going to look at rate of change and what it means. So we have two different linear graphs here. Again, it's linear because it is a straight line. And rate of change was, from last lesson, the change in y divided by the change in x. So how much is your y, or your up and down changing, divided by how much is your left and right changing? So in this question, let's see. And what you need to do is you need to take any two points on the graph that can calculate rate of change. So on a linear graph, you only need two points. And in this, it is going over 15, because my units are here from 30 to 45, and it's going up 1 from 2 to 3. So a height of 2 to a height of 3. So my change in y divided by my change of in x is 1 over 15. And I've given you some units here. I gave seconds and meters. So maybe something's going up as it may let a balloon off and it's rising through the air every certain amount of 15 seconds, it's going up one meter. So it's one meter per 15 seconds. So this rate of change is increasing. That's really important, especially when you get to the next chapter. You need to recognize that as you're going left to right, just like you read a book, we read left to right, as it's going up left to right, that is a positive rate of change. This one here, it is going down as we go left to right. It is a negative rate of change. So let's find our rate of change. Again, we only need two points. So I'm going to use this point and this point. And it's hard to see here, but these notches are each going up one meter, and these are going up three seconds at a time. So our vertical change, because remember, rate of change is change in y divided by change in x. y is going down from 6 to 5, and it's going over from 3 to 6. So it's going down 1 over 3. So our rate of change is negative 1 meters over 3 seconds. So a negative rate of change means something's dropping. It could be your speed's dropping, your height's dropping, something is going down. And here we're going down 1 meter every 3 seconds. And I guess the last one we might need to see is if we had another graph that just went straight the rate of change would be zero because it is not going up or down. Intercepts is a topic like some of the ones before where I've said it's going to follow you through grade 10, 11, and 12. Domain and range was one of those things where I need you to learn now because you're going to be expected to do it in grade 11 and 12. And intercepts is another one where if you can learn this now, get it in your mind in some way, you'll be much better off in grade 11. So intercepts are if something's intercepting it, a um, football player intercepts the ball, they get in the way of where the ball is going and stop it. So intercepts are where the graph comes into contact with an axis. So you have an x-axis and a y-axis, and the intercepts are wherever it touches. So I have an intercept here, and that's the y-intercept, because that's where my line touched the y-axis. And I have an x-intercept here, because that's where my graph line it's the x-axis. So the x-intercept is where the graph hits the x-axis. So the graph hit the x-axis at x equals negative 1 is my answer. Now, my y-intercept is where the graph hits the y-axis. My y-axis is being hit right here, which is at y equals 2. So these are the intercepts for this graph. And it's quick and easy when you have a graph. Just look at it. Y-intercept, where did it hit the y-axis? 
at a height of 2, x-intercept, where did it hit the x-axis? At x is negative 1. And now we can also do this algebraically. So algebraically, from the equation, this equation represents this line. So here's how this is going to work. The x-intercept, when we think where the graph hits the x-axis, another way of saying that is where y equals 0. Okay? Because here is a height of 0. Here's a height of negative 1, negative 2. Here's a height of 1, 2, 3, so on and so on. So the height of 0 is here. Well, that height, notice the height of 0 is on my x-axis. So when height y of 0, that's my x-axis. So to do this, I'm going to take my equation. I'm just going to put the work into this box just to highlight it. My equation is y equals 2x plus 2, and I need to find where y equals 0. So 0 equals 2x plus 2, because I said, where does y equal 0? There's a y, turn it into 0. Now, get the x alone. Subtract 2 from both sides, and I get negative 2 equals 2x. And finally, to get the x alone, I need to divide both sides by 2. So divide by 2, divide by 2, and x equals negative 1. So notice that's the same answer as I got when I was looking at the graph. So you might not always have a graph, so make sure you can do it by looking at a graph and also by solving an equation. So now let's do the next one. So a y-intercept is where my x value is 0. So let's find where x equals 0. Well, x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals 3, x equals negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. x equals 0 right here. So where is that occurring? Well, let's see. Where does x equal 0? Take your equation and put a 0 in the x's spot. Anything times 0 is 0. So y equals 2. And you can see y equals 2 is the same as I got here. So if you don't have a graph, you can find it using an equation for x-intercepts are when y is 0. y-intercepts are when x equals 0. Put that number in the equation and solve it. Last thing we're going to look at today is interpreting a graph and looking at it to, to pull some information out. So what I have here is a graph where we have profit in dollars on one side, going 0, 5, 10, 15, 20 dollars, and we have how many lemonades you have sold. So what we have, first of all, it's going up, your rate of change, left to right is going positive, so you're making money or more money for the more lemonades you sell. So in this question first, what does the x-intercept represent? First, let's find the x-intercept. Okay, we always have x-axis, y-axis. Well, the x-axis represents, if this is the profit, the x-intercept represents, it is x is 4, y is 0 at that point. So what that means is, we need to sell 4 lemonades to start breaking even. If this graph were to continue down here, the first few lemonades we're not making money at all. That's because we had to buy the supplies. And if we didn't sell enough, we'd throw those supplies out and we'd lose that money. So you have to sell four lemonades just to break even. That's what our x-intercept represents. So we could say four lemonades sold to break even. There's our answer for the first one. Now the next part, how many lemonades must you sell to profit $10? So the way you do this is find the profit of $10. Well, that's here, so let's draw over. Now, how many lemonades is that happening at? Well, it's connecting here. So it looks like it, if we break this into more chunks, $10 profit is happening at nine lemonades. So nine lemonades. So this part of the lesson is, can you look at a graph and can you interpret what certain points on it mean? So at $20 profit, 
you had to sell a certain amount of lemonades. At four lemonades, you're just breaking even. Anything less than four lemonades, you're losing money. Okay. So your lesson today for this will be on page 319, questions 3 and 4, 7, 8, 9, 14, and 16. Good luck and stay classy, math class.